Hey everybody, back again. <laughs> it's snow talk, yes, I know. Uh, the hits just keep coming, right? All right, so there's uh, going to be a focus here with this update, mainly on what's uh, coming our way for Friday night and Saturday. I'll hopefully try to get to more of the longer term stuff. Uh, certainly will on, t on TV for Sunrise tomorrow. I'm going to try to get more into Thunder and Derby time stuff. So look uh, to that for a longer term, and hopefully i get that subject onto the block here soon, too. Uh, let's uh, discuss, though, the snow potential coming our way. Today, we don't have to worry about it, uh, although it's cold enough to snow in some spots. It is certainly chilly out, mainly a cloudy sky at the moment, 38 degrees here in town, 33 in Salem. Remember that 80-degree day that we had yesterday. Wind gusts still up there, 25 to 35 miles per hour at times, so you factor that in. It feels like the 20s outside in the wave country. So uh, when it's cloudy, that doesn't help at all. So back to a wintry feel outside. And the uh, cloud cover from the satellite, you can see how it's uh, kind of uh, drifting from the northwest to southeast. It's the wraparound of that low. So there are some pockets you're going to get some sun rays, but bet on a lot of clouds for a while, it looks like. And there is some snow flurries getting squeezed out of the system right now that's mainly going to clip Jennings, maybe Jefferson, County Indiana, if not Carroll. Most of that should stay just outside of wave country. But again, if you flurries, what surprised me, see if you have them flying around if you're in that area. Most of us will just stay dry and we'll get a chance to climb to about 50 later on. Now, this is the low pressure that's uh, wound up now in the Great Lakes, produced all this severe weather last night, now impacting the eastern seaboard. Uh, once it moves away, the wind will relax. We'll begin to spread out these pressure lines you usually see on the weather map and that'll allow for the wind to relax and for clear skies to develop, which means frost and freeze scenarios develop. Now, this is always um, a tough thing to, to explain sometimes, but the University of Kentucky Ag Department, they're the ones that determine whether or not the growing season has begun or has ended. Um, and in that time of the year, when it is starting to grow, you have to be wary of cold snaps that can still influence you in the spring. So what the Weather Service does is they issue frost and freeze alerts uh, to let you guys know that the growing season as it starts could be impacted by cold attacks. In the fall, as the growing season is still active, uh, we get these cold attacks for the first time of the season. And so when these alerts come back out to let you know that they could be uh, impacting your crops or your plants outside until the growing season is officially declared has ended, which is usually declared more than likely as you get toward about mid-April portions of uh, portions of October into uh, early uh, November. That is usually when we start to see some of that declaration begin to uh, leave the weather service and that stops. So we're now back into that situation again where the Ag Department says that Central and Southern Kentucky is uh, does have a growing season starting again so freeze warnings are out again mainly for our Kentucky counties just south of Louisville, Bullet County to the south as we're talking about the freeze warning that will stay in effect. So let's walk through. Here's how the game plan looks as we head through uh, the next couple of days where we get into Friday's system. Once we head into the overnight, we'll see temperatures this afternoon near 50. Tonight, we drop down below freezing in many spots. Some 20s are possible in outlying areas. Can't rule that out. Uh, with here in the city, about 31 it looks like. Tomorrow, a few passing clouds, perhaps a few showers off to the north or sprinkles. I think we'll stay mainly dry, though. Temperatures well into the 50s. Now we get into the fun. Here we go into Friday afternoon and Friday night. This is a very potent wave that is going to be digging in across the Mississippi Valley into the Ohio Valley as we head into Friday and Saturday. As that happens, timing is everything. It looks like it's going to be Friday night this wave will dig in. Looks to start as rain as we into the evening time period. Now how quickly that takes place determines it will be determined by how dry our atmosphere is at that point. We need to, you know, we'll track the dew points once we get into Friday, let you know how quickly the rain could begin. But I think in general, Friday evening, as we approach the midnight hour, especially the rain chance will start. But then we run into it quickly turning cold enough to turn it into a period of snow into the area. Now, when we look at the upper air on this, the uh, amount of lift that this boundary's got, that when it digs in from the Mississippi Valley into the Ohio Valley, I mean, this is a tremendous amount of energy things got. I mean, it's really going to be digging in. And it's because of that, there's going to be some decent rates of precipitation right north of that line. And that is the reason why we're talking about the rate, especially snowfall rate, can trump a warm ground. Here's the latest look at the uh, sounding. This is looking from, here's the ground level, and here's where the uh, airplanes fly up above. Uh, again, the green line is moisture, red is temperature. And notice, as we the Friday night, uh, we still have precipitation falling, 
in this area, but most of it is to the left of the magic zero dash line there. So most of this, again, is snowflakes that are melting when they hit closer to the ground. But as we increase the rainfall rate, comes down harder, now we're starting to close in the dew point and the actual temperature numbers together. They begin to collapse or wet bulb together, and that could be just enough to switch the rain over roughly around midnight or so to a period of moderate, if not heavy, snowfall. I mean, all we have to do is just get just to the left of that zero line, and we're there, just like that. And at every location, we'll see that. It depends on the rate. So if the models trend uh, lighter with the system, with the precipitation rain uh, rates and rainfall in general, this is going to be a, mainly a rain event. But as long as it continues to show signs of a very potent system with uh, moderate to potentially heavy rainfall, that could be enough to switch us over to that period of very big snowflakes and heavy wet snow. It's going to be a very sharp cutoff, guys. We've been through this four times this season. This one looks to be very similar. So the NAM model itself, I know it's hard to read this, it's giving us, it's saying about three or so inches will fall, but 2.7 looks to accumulate as we get into early uh, Saturday morning. Now, yes, a lot of this will be on grass areas, the cars, the trees. It's going to stick to everything. So it's going to be pretty snow. Uh, and it, this is a situation, too, in April that when you get a heavy, wet snow like that, you've got to measure it fast because even as it continues to fall, it's got such a high moisture content, it'll start collapsing on itself. So the depth may not ever match what the actual snowfall actually was in this event. That's very common when you get into uh, spring snowstorms like this. Uh, so that's the reason why this is going to be a very messy, slushy, heavy, wet snow kind of deal. A lot of water content with this one, guys. All right, the roads will be slushy, just like we've seen with the past several systems. If it comes down hard enough, yeah, it can cover the roads up. That is possible. And that's why the alert day is out for those that will be traveling late Friday night and say you're heading to the Papa John's 10 mile or Saturday morning, you may still be dealing with this mess. So that's the reason why the alert is out, just for that narrow window of time. Otherwise, roads will be fine. Okay. So that is how the soundings are looking. Now, when you look at ratios, that's another important factor. I mentioned the high water content. Normally, it's a 10 to 1 or 10 inches. Um, of snow per one inch of rainfall is usually how you balance things out. You know, you always say, oh, all this rain we're getting brown. What if that were snow? How much we would have gotten? You know, well, typically 10 to 1, although here in uh, in Louisville, we usually average more like 12 to 1. In this setup, it's likely going to be about 7 or 8 to 1 and may get to 10 to 1 before it ends, which means that a lot of it is going to be water content. So, do be careful, you model watchers, on clicking the 10 to 1 ratio snowfall accumulation maps. You're going to get some wild looking totals, all right? Uh, it's not going to be a 10 to 1 deal. This one's going to have uh, a much different ratio to it. So that means the snow amounts are going to be lower. But still, having said that, I still think we're going to talk about an accumulating snow, okay? So here's the way I'm going to outline it for now. Likely chance to see that accumulations. I'm going to go mainly south and east of Louisville. That's where timing of the digging motion of the uh, the low itself and the timing of overnight that is where they really seem to overlap and plus in general a little bit higher elevation to the east of us but everything lines up a little more in the darker blue it's still possible certainly in the lighter blue to get accumulated snow on this absolutely uh, which as you can see it includes a lot of us here in wave country so my advice is if you're a snow lover you got to either stay up all night or get up early already to see it because uh, it, it won't take long to get rid of it be pretty snow. Now, term historic has been brought up. That is true. The most we've ever had in the month of April in Louisville is 3.2 inches of snow. I will say some of the models indicate more than that could fall. So, technically, uh, I think our lower end and top 10 uh, April snows is something like a half inch, a little less than that. So, it won't take much for us to make this a top 10 snowfall event, or it could even be an historic snow. That is possible, guys. Not just even for us. Lexington, other sites, Frankfurt down to Bowling Green. It's possible. So, yeah, this is something that's worth uh, noting. And uh, write down in your journals, if it even happens. And I say if because these snow events, everything has to line up just right. As I just described with the snow rate and the timing and all that, has to all line up to get that. And it's only Wednesday, so there's room for error. I'm not trying to get you excited or hopes up. I'm just informing you, giving you a heads up. Just after that, there was another lull that moves by. It looks like it'll be rain, but it too could have wrap around and go to a rain-snow mix or flurries. I'm hoping that's the last one. I'm done. I'm a snow lover, but I'm getting tired now. <laughs>
So we'll see what happens, but uh, that's the way things are looking now, guys. We'll update you all on mid midday coming up, and of course, we'll look at it all again coming up tomorrow.